Hello everyone. Welcome to my channel. This is Karuna teaching the course Computer Architecture and Organization. In this video, let us concentrate on enabling and disabling interrupts. The arrival of an interrupt request from an external device causes the processor to stop the execution of one program and start the execution of another program okay so interrupts can arrive at any time they may alter the sequence of events hence the interruption of program execution must be carefully controlled a fundamental facility found in all computers is the ability to enable and disable such interruptions as desired in some situations processor should ignore interrupt request example compute print program in the case of compute print program for example let us consider this is compute print program okay so an interrupt request from the printer should be accepted only if there are output lines to be printed after printing the last line of a set of n lines interrupt should be disabled until another set becomes available for printing okay let us consider the case single interrupt request from one device here suppose processor executing the main program okay so this is isr1 isr2 ISR three, ISR four, five, and so on. Here, interrupt request. This belongs to I/O device one. This belongs to I/O device two, and so on. This interrupt request occur at this during the execution of main program. Then process stops the execution of the current program and jumps to the interrupting. Device okay, jump to the corresponding ISR and starts execution of ISR one. Here again, a request is coming from the ISR two. Then processor stops the ISR one and then jumps to ISR two. Here uh, again, a request is coming from ISR three and the processor stops the execution of ISR two and then jumps to ISR three. Okay, likewise here. If the interrupt request signal is active during the execution of the program, that causing the system to enter an infinite loop from which it cannot recover. Okay, if interrupt request occur, processor jumps to the corresponding uh, ISR routine and then starts the execution of that ISR. And again, while executing this ISR. Again, if interrupt request is coming from another device, then stops the execution of current program and then jump to the uh, another ISR. Okay. Likewise, processor enter into infinite loop if INTR is active. Okay. So no ISR execution will be completed here. Okay. Here processor keeps on jumping into ISR routines. Okay, so several mechanisms are available to solve this problem. There are three possibilities to solve this problem. While executing one ISR, interrupt request should be disabled. Let us see how the interrupt request will be disabled. In case of first possibility, to ignore the interrupt request signal, this is processor. This is I O device interrupt request signal I N T R. Okay, to ignore I N T R line interrupt disable instruction is used as the first instruction in the I S R, so that no further interruptions will occur until an interrupt enable instruction. Okay, so here. IE instruction will be the last instruction of the ISR before the return from ISR. That means execution of the return 
from ISR is completed before further interruption occurs. Coming to the second possibility, processor automatically disable interrupts before starting the execution of the ISR. In this case, one bit in program status register called interrupt enable which indicates whether interrupts are enabled or disabled. Okay, so here if interrupt enable is equal to 1, interrupt request received, that means enable interrupt. If it is 0, disable the further interrupts. Okay, so processor likewise interrupts can be enabled or disabled with the help of IE bit of the program status register. Okay, next coming to the third possibility. Here this is the clock signal. Okay, okay. Processor has a special INTR for which the interrupt handling circuit responds only to the leading edge of the signal. This is the leading edge of the signal. Such a line is said to be edge triggered. Okay. So, in this case, the processor will receive only one request regardless of how long the line is activated up to here. Hence, there is no danger of multiple interrupts and no need to disable interrupt request from this line. Okay, so uh, processor detects the interrupt request signal in the duration of edge triggered. Okay, that's what INTR signal is known as edge triggered interrupt request signal. Okay, so then processor performs the uh, corresponding ISR routine until next edge triggered. Okay, so during this period, no further interrupts will be allowed. Okay, like that, interrupt can be disabled while executing the current ISR. Okay, and then after completion of this, interrupt request will be enabled. Okay, so let us summarize the topic sequence of events involved in handling an interrupt request from a single device. Assume interrupts are enabled. The following scenario is the device raises an interrupt request. The processor interrupts the program currently being executed. Interrupts are disabled by changing the control bits in the program status register. The device is informed that its request has been recognized. That means process sends the acknowledgement signal to the I.O. device. Okay. So, acknowledgement signal is like this. I-N-T-A. Okay. And in response, it deactivates the interrupt request signal next the action requested by the interrupt is performed next interrupts are enabled and execution of the interrupted program is resumed okay likewise interrupts can be enabled or disabled by the processor at any time Okay, thank you. We will meet in next video.